Good morning, class, and welcome to Chapter 5, The Search for Truth, in the uh, Big Questions textbook by Solomon and Higgins. Today um, and this week, we will be doing something slightly different, meaning you won't have uh, opening and closing questions that I want you to answer. Instead, I will pose one question for you to answer uh, by the end of the week. And this question will involve this picture that you're looking at. In this picture, you have three theories of truth. Um, the first one is the correspondence theory. The second one is the coherence theory. And the third is the pragmatic theory, each having its own interesting illustration. And so let me just go ahead and read the question that I want you to answer, I also post it on Canvas, so you have it in written form. And then I want to say a little bit about the picture. So here's the question. Explain each theory in your own words. And then I ask, uh, do these theories of truth compete with each other or complement each other? How should we evaluate the truth of each theory? So we have the book presents at least three different theories of truth. First, correspondence, second, coherence, and third, pragmatic. The first one, I would guess, is the one I think most people are most familiar with. So for example, if you haven't heard of competing theories of truth before, I would argue that for most people, what they think is truth and what could be truth is a correspondence theory of truth. And that theory states, the, the book explains, true beliefs or sentences correspond to the facts. So something is true if it is a belief that corresponds to the way the world actually is. And so we have the sentence, the cat is on the mat, and then you can tell by your uh, empirical knowledge or sensory knowledge, you see the cat on the mat and that sentence or belief corresponds to the way the world actually is uh, through your sensory knowledge. And that would be a, a true belief because it corresponds, hence the name. Coherence uh, is slightly different and you can kind of see that there's not a picture, there's not uh, empirical evidence uh, per se visualized um, or, or illustrated, but it does rely on on um, empirical knowledge among other things. It, it really evaluates truth by how well a uh, claim, a sentence, corresponds to the other sentences that you also uh, believe to be uh, true. And so we have in the center, much like in the first, the cat is on the mat, and those correspond to other beliefs that you think is true, that you think are true. Uh, I do have a cat. Uh, there is a gray spot in the corner. The mat is covered by something. The cat is on the porch. The purring sound is coming from the mat. And all these other sentences cohere well to this idea, right? If you said instead that for the center sentence in that center of this uh, small web of beliefs that the dog is on the mat, that sentence uh, would not be true in that it uh, would not cohere uh, to the other sentences, right? It could be gray, and uh, so it could cohere to a few. The ones um, below the uh, cat is on the mat, there is a gray spot in the corner. That could be a dog. The mat is covered by something. That still makes sense. Um, uh, the cat is not on the porch. That's kind of neutral. Um, I do have a cat that um, could also work. Um, you might also have a dog though. And then the purring sound is coming from the mouth. Oh, that doesn't cohere well because the dog doesn't purr, but the cat does. And so that is how that type of theory um, for, for uh, truth uh, sort of functions by coherence. Now, so part of the question asks, would these two uh, complement each other? or, or um, compete with each other. And that's something that I want you to uh, uh, attempt to answer after reading the chapter, and then we can discuss it. The third theory of truth is called the uh, pragmatic theory. 
pragma is uh, well pragmatism uh, comes from the Greek word pragma which means actions and actions can also be sort of translated into work uh, true beliefs or sentences are those that work and then you have sentences like it's time to feed the cat get the cat off the mat why can't we burn the mat why is the mat so heavy and so these are statements that um, um, show action but there's a certain belief that is causing this action and that belief is that the cat is on the mat and if the belief produces certain actions then that belief is true in that it produces those actions there's been um, quite a few pragmatists but um, I think the clearest one uh, would be William James and I think because he associates pragmatism with a with a larger host of activities than, than some of the others do uh, but he has a, an interesting way of describing it at the end of chapter two on his work on pragmatism and he essentially asks a series of questions um, sort of from a, a psychological philosophical point of view he asks um, are there um, ways we ought to live and he doesn't mean anything objective necessarily he just means subjectively speaking um, are there things we uh, ought to to do and things we ought not to do and most people will say well yes you know it's not just completely arbitrary and so that's that's his first uh, question and then he says are there certain beliefs that if believed would help us do these things and most people would say well yes certain beliefs help us uh, produce those actions and certain other beliefs hinder us from producing those actions and then he says then ought we to believe them and most people would say yes if we ought to do those actions and if those beliefs help us to do those actions then we ought to believe them and he makes this final step which most people do not and he says I think that when we say we ought to believe something that is the same as saying it is true and that I think is the most controversial idea within certain interpretations of uh, pragmatism it is true in that it works so um, I hope this brief video was uh, helpful in introducing this topic uh, do read the entire chapter before uh, attempting to answer these questions and um, I look forward to hearing your answers have a good week